Tuesday, Facebook Live, August 3rd, 3rd. 2022. Gus. Hello, Gus. Yes. You and Christina had an anniversary. Oh, here we go. So there they are. So now you can. We're kind of switching places tonight, uh, changing it up. Hello, Tiffany. Anybody else coming on? So like and share. It is important that you do that. Hi, Olivia. Pray you're healing up good. Armando says he's doing good. We welcome everyone. Yes. Good. You staying cool out there, folks? It's just <laughs> Bakersfield summer. Yeah. Nothing new. Yeah. Amen. Anybody else on? Oh, hello. There's someone new. Can you say where you're from? Oh, Olivia's feeling tired. We pray for strength for you, dear. You've been through a lot. Give yourself a break. Goodness. Well, we welcome all of you. So like, share. Uh, it helps the algorithm. It, it just uh, is good. All right. Amen. Hey, Ron, Ron is on. Hello, hello, Ron. Hello, Ron and Claudine. That's cool. You made it on Facebook Live. Glory. Minnesota, Minnesota you used, used to, to live in Bakersfield. Wow, cool. that's amazing. Well, we welcome you. Yes. That's wonderful. Amen. Good. Okay, honey, if you want to pray. All right. So, Father, we thank you for tonight, Lord. We just pray as uh, we discuss this uh, subject tonight, Lord, the Holy Spirit, you would guide and direct our words, give us wisdom. Lord, let it minister life and encouragement to all those that would hear. We ask your blessing upon it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hello, Lucretia. Lucretia. Lucretia's in the house. <laughs> so, folks, um, you know, Pastor Larry and I, we, as usual, we go back and forth and uh, teach and preach and prophesy. And um, so, but I guess it's my turn tonight. Yeah, I've been after her for three weeks. <laughs> so, um, if I were to title this, which I did, it's called Spiritual Childbirth. And um, this came out of Monday Night Prayer uh, as we were praying. Um, one of the intercessors, um, Danielle's grandma, Danielle gets me in job. Oh, that's wonderful. Okay, well, we welcome you. And um, I know who you are now. Okay, God bless you. Mm -hmm. So um, anyway, we were in prayer and different things were coming up. The intercessors were seeing things and actually one, as soon as they walked into the sanctuary said, um, I see a lot of changes coming. And uh, with changes comes transition, um, comes decisions to be made and things like that. And, uh, you know, when we are in prayer, that is um, a womb uh, that births destiny, not only individually, but it births destiny for the church as well. And uh, so, you are carrying some kind of destiny. You, are, you have been made inside to carry um, carry Christ, first of all, but you carry your purpose, you carry your future, and it's up to you as to how you will bring this thing to birth. Um, and God has timing in it, of course, and, and um, process and all of that but uh first of all i want to just lay a foundation of you know god talks about wombs and birthing in scripture and he talks about us naturally as in jeremiah 1 5 it says before i formed you in the womb i knew you before you were born i sanctified you 
I, I ordained you a prophet to the nations. So you can see here, even in the womb, Jeremiah had a call of God uh, upon his life. Even God said, I've ordained you as a prophet to the nations. And so um, I, I think that's a beautiful thing that we can put to our lives that God births. He already knows who we're going to be, what we're going to be. He knows our sex. He knows um, uh, where we can go in life. And so we can hold fast to that scripture. And then the other one that I love is Psalm 139, 13 through 7, 16. It says, For you were formed in my inward parts. You covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. We quote that a lot, but we have to remember we were formed in a womb and God knew us in that womb. Marvelous are your works and that my soul knows very well. My frame was not hidden. We were not hidden from God. Uh, even in the womb, when I was made in secret and skillfully wrought in the lowest parts of the earth, your eyes saw my substance being yet unformed. And in your book, they all were written, were written the days fashioned for me. So see, God knows our end from the beginning. He knows our beginning and our end. When as yet there were none of them them. So even before I was born, you were born. God knows how many days we're going to be on the earth. And uh, so if he knows us naturally how many days we're going to be on the earth. There is spiritual uh, childbirth in our life that he knows how many days and and, and the process of our life and how long it's going to take for us to get to where we need to be. And oftentimes we want to have that right away when it does take time. I remember being in my 30s, feeling the call of God, uh, actually 20s, 30s, and it was very, very heavy and strong. And there are some things that I am beginning to walk in, in in my 60s that I saw in my 20s. Now, I know that God can speed up the time, He can, and which he is, uh, where it says the plowman will overtake the reaper. Um, I, I understand that in the season of God that, that we are in, what took uh, years can take a week with God now. We, God is speeding things up. But I guess my point is, is that you can see things in your life and get frustrated when things aren't happening fast enough when God has a time to it. And if he's birthed us and if he knows us and if he's in, intricately acquainted with all of our ways, then um, he knows what he's doing. And this is another one that I like, is Ecclesiastes 11.5. It's in the message. It says, just as you'll never understand the mystery of life forming in a pregnant woman, so you'll never understand the mystery at work in all that God does. So when, when God is forming us and, and uh, you know, creating destiny, sometimes we don't understand. It's a mystery. But as I said on Sunday... God is always working behind the scenes and we don't know. And that's where we have to trust the Lord. Amen. Do you have anything to say, honey? No, go ahead. Okay. So, um, so as we transition into uh, spiritual childbirth, there are different stages. And let me just say this, as, as we were in prayer, this birthing uh, title was birthed in me. I was very excited about it. Um, I like birthing. Uh, I am a mom and so on. But uh, in order to even carry a child, there has to be intimacy. And so if you want to discover your destiny, if you want to discover your purpose, there comes a time where you have to spend time with the Lord. You have to get to know him. He has to get to know you um, e even more. Um, like he deals with us. He deals with our attitudes, our, our um, you know, our selfishness and, and things like that. And he, he won't 
override our will. So in other words, he can have this great plan, but we have to be able to yield and say yes and amen to the Lord. And that's what happens in that spiritual womb, in that time of prayer, in that time of walking with God, and where our yes becomes even stronger in, in our life. And, and we say the yes and amen. So, um, you know, <laughs> Let me say this, as there are different stages in our life, uh, we transition from different assignments. And we've spoken about this uh, in times past on Facebook Lives. Like last week, I think we even brought it up on Reaching Our Destiny. You might want to check that out. But, um, you know, we, we are always growing and we are always getting older. And just because a person is younger does it not disqualify them. And just because you're in mid middle and you have all these children, it does not disqualify you. And maybe you're working and you're busy. And when you get older, it doesn't disqualify you as well because God always has something for us to do. And we can see this in scripture with Elizabeth. Elizabeth could have uh, had the excuse, well, I'm too old to be carrying John the Baptist. But God had purpose for her. She was a forerunner for Mary. Um, and that, that was a God-given friendship to encourage Mary because we know that Mary was so, you know, she was younger. She had to go through uh, persecution of, you know, hey, you're pregnant and you're not even married. You're, you're in, get engaged to Joseph. What happened? You're supposed to be a virgin when she was a virgin. So, you know, I find that so comforting that God will give us relationships in our life that when we need to birth destiny, that um, he'll bring people by our side to encourage us and to help us, you know, don't quit don't um, don't give up. Um, you know, carry this baby through. Accept what God is doing, even though you are in different stages. You know, you can do this. So we have to break off the excuses of I'm I'm too old, or I don't have time for this, or I'm not prepared. Because oftentimes God's surprises to us are, hey, you know what? I would like you to do this. And when that wasn't even on our radar, you know, that we've had that happen to us many times. And so we can quickly say yes or, and he gives us time to ponder it and to accept it. But I just say, encourage the new things that God wants to bring into our lives. They are unexpected. You know, you could get a call from out of the blue that says, um, you know, I would like you to do this and that and, um, and say yes. Amen. Pray about it, of course. And so when we become pregnant, when we have that intimacy with the Lord, when he gives us those surprises, though in unexpected things, we have choices right there. We can say the yes and amen. We can accept, oh, I am pregnant. And the father has to accept it just as much as the, as the woman does, doesn't he? You know, because he begins to transition. He begins to prepare. Um, so we can uh, see that we could quit. And what does that look like? That where we take matters into our own hand and we could abort it. We could say, forget it. Let me say this, that what, if you choose to abort your destiny, God will give it to somebody else. And you know what? And you'll look at it and go, mm, I was supposed to do that. And you'll have regret. So you don't ever want to live life in regret. Make those decisions to accept and to believe that God will see you through it. Amen? And then there are different types of birthings um, where... Uh, you could have a premature um, where you could, uh, th because of different circumstances, you have to um, 
be in ICU to help take care of things because maybe it got birth prematurely and didn't fully develop to the process. So here, that's a key right there. It always has to develop fully before you can grow. Amen? And then it, you decide to carry it full term. And guess what, folks? You have to birth this thing. You have to go through those transition times. And, you know, you go through the first trimester, the second trimester, the third trimester. And, um, you know, as a mom, we can see these things where you get focused, um, you begin to prepare mentally and physically, you get the nursery ready. So spiritually, what are you doing to prepare for that thing that God has asked you to do or, um, or a certain assignment? Um, your priorities change. That is so important. Um, you can see this sometimes, you know, when you've been single forever, you know, and you get married, you have to prepare to be in the same household with someone else. You see, you have to get prepared mentally. So you have to get prepared mentally for having this baby, for having a spiritual birth. Amen. You begin to simplify your life, you know, and you realize, you know, well, I used to do that and now I can't do that anymore because what's important to me is this child. So what's important to me is this spiritual thing that I am birthing. So that may mean that I need to say no to, to some um, uh, um, meetings, no to some uh, friendship um, time that we always spent together talking on the phone or, or things like that. It doesn't mean you cut the friendship off, but if they're mature, they're going to understand that you need to, to change your priority and make that right. Amen for your life. And then they'll be one of your greatest cheerleaders because they're going to go, yes, you did it. And so there's that preparation. Do you have anything, honey? Well, I'll just, you know, as you're sharing that and, you know, when you, the Bible says that he's begun a good work in us is going to perform it, going to finish it. And so we have to remember that no matter, you know, we go through things and maybe maybe you stumbled and fell and you got back up. Well, God's for you and he's He's behind you and, and he's encouraging you to, to carry through because he's going to see you through. And Isaiah 66 verse 9 says, shall I bring to the birth and not cause to bring forth. Shall the Lord, saith the Lord, shall I cause to bring forth and shut the womb? So what God's birthing in you, he wants to complete, he wants to finish it. And so, you know, even just like in a natural birth, uh, sometimes, you know, there's there's pain, there's there's discomfort, and in the spiritual birthing, and what God does in us, sometimes it can be pain and discomfort, but he's gonna see you through it, and you're gonna get through it in Jesus' name. So I just encourage you, keep going. Keep going forward. You will reap if you faint not, in Jesus' name. Oh, amen. Amen. So, um, yes, hallelujah. Um, there's the, when we're ready to give birth, um, you hear the word transition. Your water breaks, and you know it's time to get moving. And the pains start happening. And so just as he said, there, there are things that are painful, uh, especially if you change relationships and things like that. People that you thought were with you aren't with you anymore. And it, there's pain there. Um, may, maybe you have to change a job. And, and so people that you hung around with there, there's change. But you know what? There's newness that God wants to bring forth in our lives. He's not a stale God. Um, mm -hmm. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? And so uh, our God, uh, our God always causes us to uh, bring change in our life. So let's talk about transition and that painful process. Your The definition is it's the period of changing from one state or condition to another, all right? It, you, you have to change. You can't stay 
in the past and what happened, you know, all the good things. Oftentimes we want to get rid of things because, you know, that, that, that was hurtful. And I don't want to remember that anymore. But what about the times that were really good? You have to let go of that and reach on. It's, it's like, <laughs> you know, you had one child and then you're going to have another. When you thought it was so important uh, to just have that one, but now you're going to have another. And so I, I declare that there are multiple birthing seasons that are inside of your womb. Amen? All right. So transition. We're moving from one state or condition to another. Um, there's change. There's movement that, that takes place. The baby begins to uh, get down into the birth canal. It gets to position our, it, itself so that it, it, it can come out. And um, it takes work uh, for the woman and it takes work for us to birth our destiny and birth change. It really does. Um, but you know what? God does not leave us um, comfortless. He does not leave us alone. He says, when you are weak, I am strong. And um, I want to give you this scripture. It's in Exodus 1.19. It's in the NIV. And this is in reference to when uh, the midwives were giving birth to children back in Pharaoh's time. And remember, Pharaoh wanted to kill all the boys. And so um, he was beginning to get very upset that why are these babies still being born when I have ordered them to be killed, okay? And uh, so the midwives answered Pharaoh and said, the Hebrew women are not like us, Egyptian women. They are vigorous and give birth, birth before the midwives arrive. So vigorous means strong, healthy, full of energy. So when we're going to birth something, I declare to you that we are vigorous people that your energy level will come up in Jesus' name. Full of energy. I tell you what invigorates us is knowing what God has for us. Knowing what he has for us, knowing that he will be with us, knowing that it's going to be joyful, because that takes us into John 16, 21. It says a woman, when she is in labor, has sorrow because her hour has come. But as soon as she has given birth to the child, she no longer remembers the anguish, the pain, the joy that a human being has been born into the world. So there is joy in birthing. That's what you remember. Now, you, do you want to go through and birth another baby right away? No, God gives us time. But there is joy in seeing what has been accomplished and what, uh, what came to pass. I remember uh, oftentimes in the women's conferences that, that we would have, uh, we had them for seven years strong, and there was so much work. I would have vision in it, and and uh, there were so many aspects, this, that, or whatever, meetings, prayer, uh, birthing messages, and and organizing, and, and all those things. And then when you come to that day, and when you see women's lives changed, I forgot about all that, and I was already looking at, well, what are we going to do next year? Because... It was so beautiful to see God touch people's lives and see women changed, healed, and delivered uh, by just creating an atmosphere, a womb, so to speak, for them to be birthed. And so that brought and brings such joy to me. You know, us as Pastor Larry and I, when we uh, look at the church and, and we see what has happened happened over the years it brings joy to us 
Yeah, there's a lot of pain. Yeah, there's a lot of transitions and change, but it's so beautiful to see that when you get it, you know, and when you begin to um, walk with God in a new level, when your gifts and talents and abilities begin to get manifest, oh, it brings joy. I completely forget all about all that. Do you have anything to say to that, honey? Well, just you know, the whole thing about God birthing stuff in us in First uh, Thessalonians 5.24 says, He who calls you is faithful, who also will do it. And so the thing about when, what God calls us to do, he, he empowers us, and He's the one that goes before, and He's the one that causes it to take place. There's things we have to do, and we have to obey and, and, and follow through, except all those things. But, you know, He's faithful. He doesn't call you to do something. He doesn't empower you or doesn't give you the, the, the resources and everything you need to, to make it happen. Amen? Mm-hmm. And the other thing I want to talk about just briefly is that uh, it's probably been several months ago I heard Chris Valentin talking about uh, transformation and being transformed. And, and, uh, and, and he said that it was like the, the Holy Spirit told him uh, it's, it's a metamorphosis. Mm-hmm. Okay, butterfly. and it's it's like you go from a caterpillar to a butterfly, and so you you change completely and totally. It's it's totally different, and uh, in Webster's it says metamorphosis is a change of physical form or structure or substance, especially by supernatural means. Hmm. Okay, what God does in us is supernatural. Okay, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things pass away, and behold, all things become new. All right, and and the, the the whole idea of being a caterpillar and crawling around in the dirt, you know, and you become a butterfly where you can fly. I mean, you go to new heights, you experience different things, and so God is in the process of of transforming us, even in this season that we've come through, and we have to realize that He's at, He's a, He's about His business, and He's doing some things. And so we just need to be sensitive uh, to the Spirit of God and follow through on what He's He's doing in our lives. Amen. Amen. I love that metamorphosis thing. Um, supernatural. It's supernatural. Um, I also uh, heard that and know that when a butter, when the caterpillar uh, begins his metamorphosis thing. Do you realize that in that cocoon, everything goes to liquid? Just like melts. It melts. Like you mm-hmm. can't recognize that it's a caterpillar or a butterfly. This is for somebody right now. Because you don't recognize <laughs> what's going on. You don't recognize. Maybe people can't recognize what's going on. But if you stay in the process, if you stay in that metamorphosis, stay in that transition, we will begin to see the beautiful butterfly that you were made to be, mm-hmm. you see. And I, th- I think that is so crucial in being able to go to a new level. That's why we have to let go. Uh, even the woman in childbirth, she has to let go and let her body do what it needs to do. And uh, so we have to let, really let go of maybe um, your identity is not wrapped up in your assignment. See, that's the, the key. So you can let go of what you did there and reach forward for the new and pressing thing. You know, that's, Our identity is not in our assignment. You see, I have to know who I am. And then the assignments come. Mm. Because we don't want insecure leaders. And we don't want you to be insecure in who you are. Because if you're looking for position, if you're looking for um, that kind of recognition, see, that's got to melt away. That has to melt away so that God can form you the way he wants you to be formed. Oh, such a beautiful thing. Christ be formed in us, not us. Amen? 
So let me just share the, the uh, in uh, Philippians chapter three, in verse thirteen, or I'll start with verse twelve. It says, Paul says, not as though I have already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may ap apprehend that for which I also, which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Brethren, I count myself, count not myself to have apprehended, but these th one, this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind, reaching forth unto the things which are before, I press toward the prize of the high call of God. And so, you know, there's some things you got to let go. you got to forget. Amen. And uh, God is God's going to change you. Now, a few minutes ago, I saw that Stormy was on her. Stormy, that's what God's doing in your life. He's redeeming your life and he's transforming you and making you into a new person. To, to And you're going to be blessed. You're going to be blessed. So keep going. Amen. Amen. That's beautiful. I say yes and amen to that as well. Um, then that goes in line with, you know, prophetic words will activate also, not only in the prayer time, in the womb, but prophetic words. When people prophesy over you, when you hear God speak, it activates and it begins to, to cause that birthing process. Usually, I have seen where prophetic words in my life... Um, well, I didn't know that that was me. And it starts to become alive and I turn towards it and um, begin to embrace it. And so Psalm 29, 9 says, God's mighty voice makes the deer to give birth. His thunderbolt voice says the forest, lays the forest bare. In his temple all fall before him with each one shouting, Glory, glory, the God of glory. So if he can make the deer to give birth, he can make you give birth. Amen? The deer is an animal. You are a human being, a child of God, a son and daughter of the Most High God. So when he speaks over you and when there's a prophetic word, it activates catch that guys that's part of how i get addicted to the prophetic too is whenever i see people get activated and stirred up the power of the prophetic word uh it it just makes me embrace the prophetic all the more you have anything to say yeah i just was thinking you know when it comes to Natural childbirth, when the time is right, the child comes forth. The child, everything starts to, to change in the woman's body to position the child, to bring the child forth, to birth the child. And, and it's like, as I was thinking about that, it was like, when the timing's right, mm. God will do what he said he's going to do in your life. God is going to birth it. It's going to come forth. And, and uh, so just don't give up. Keep moving forward. Keep looking to God. He's going to do an amazing thing. Amen. 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 It just keeps coming up in me about stillbirth. I don't know whether there's anybody watching that had one of those. It's very, very painful. And I pray um, comfort of the Holy Spirit over you in Jesus' name. But don't let a spiritual stillbirth happen. You know, why is there a stillbirth? Because the circumstances um, around the baby, it, it just wasn't right. You know, it wasn't, it just didn't connect. And and it's God's way of, of taking care of things. You know, we don't understand. Remember, it's a mystery. So... That's what you don't want to have is a stillbirth. Allow God to nurture you. Allow God to um, bring those nutrients, bring those relationships to you. Because I'm, I'm telling you that, you know, you need uh, um, people that maybe have been where you know that you're going to help you, to mentor you, to disciple you, to be your coach and, and uh, 
you know, come on, you can do this. And, uh, you know, especially business people, they, they have a good way of doing this if you're not independent. Um, you know, they have business gatherings where they, I know the whole purpose is to network and, and to hopefully to get business, but there are relationships that are formed in those kinds of settings and where they can encourage one another, hey, I, I use this printer guy and I use this and, you know, there's those kind of things. And it's the same thing in the spiritual aspect of, of carrying a child to birth. Um, you need um, other ministers around. You, this is not the time to be a lone ranger. Um, to allow the enemy to pull you off and, you know, well, they don't understand me and, and on and on and I'm just going to do this. You know, that's when you have a stillbirth or you birth an Ishmael where I'm going to take this on my own just like Sarah did and he told me I was going to do this so I'm going to make it happen this way when that was not God's plan at all. And so um, you just have to be very careful and cautious Oh, the other thing that comes up is adopting. Hmm. Adopting. You know, um, you'll adopt new ways of doing things. You'll adopt uh, uh, vision and, and be a part of maybe someone else's vision uh, for a season and time. Or maybe that's what you do for the rest of your life. And guess what? You will be happy in that. Mm -hmm. You will be content. It, and that is so, so awesome. So many times the church at large, which the church is changing, we always thought that we had to birth um, or become pastors and birth churches when we couldn't hang around other fivefold ministries. And as the, the church is being birthed in fivefold ministry, we're realizing that we need these apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers to equip the saints to do the work of the ministry, and we can hang out together. And and sure, can you be coming and going? Absolutely. But um, we need one another. I guess that's my point. If you're going to birth destiny, if you're going to birth children, it's the same whenever you do have a, a child. Women fought, try to find other women who they can hang around and be together as a source of support. So it's the same in, in, um, in church life, too. Find those relationships. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right. I thought you'd have something else to say, honey. No, I think you covered it good. What time are we at? 7.53. Wow. But was this a good time, guys? Um, I heard Martha say, I saw Martha say on the post, um, this is timely, very timely or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, so I just pray for you folks, this timely word of birthing um, mm -hmm. and transition and first semester, second semester, third semester, you don't know where you're at or you probably do. And so I just speak life over you right now and that you will carry things to full term. And I declare vigorous that you will be full of vigor mm -hmm. just as the Hebrew women were full of vigor. They could not stop the birthing. Pharaoh could not stop the birthing process because they were very vigorous. They were very strong healthy and full of energy. So I declare to you that this is not a time to um, quit. This is not a time to be weak in your bodies. I speak health over you and I declare that you will give birth full term, no complications. You will transition correctly and we accept new birthings we accept change in jesus name Amen. we accept change
It's not a bad word. Forgive us, Lord, for resisting. We will not resist change. We will not resist change in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. There is so much destiny over you folks. There is so much destiny. There is so much for you to do. Mm. Hallelujah. We pray over them too, honey. And Lord, we thank you that what you've begun and even what in some you're just beginning to make changes and births and things, but God, that they will follow through and that God, that everything that you designed them for, everything you planned for their life, Lord, that it will come to pass in your time according to your will and your purpose. So Father, bless them, give them stamina and strength in this season. In Jesus' name, give them fresh vision, give them fresh discernment to see and understand, to know what to do in this season, in the season they're in right now. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen, God bless you guys, we love you. Bless you. And women, we have uh, Pastor Tracy Espinoza from McFarland this Saturday, 9.30, be there. We're gonna have a great time together. Amen? Amen. Good night, men, All have right. prayer at nine. No, what did I get nine? Six. At 6 a.m. on Friday. Friday. Amen. God bless you all. Have a great evening. Stay cool. Amen.